I laser engraved and cut all of this artwork using the Creality Falcon A1 below. And I just want to show you guys the cleanness of the cut. So I made some coasters and you can see on the back, it does a really, really clean job of cutting. So some laser engravers, when they cut, the back part is not super clean. I am using a honeycomb, which definitely helps with that. But you could tell it came out really, really clean for these coasters. Got these other coasters as well. So it came out really, really good. And then I made some Christmas ornaments and I was playing around <clears throat> with the settings. So I feel like this part I, I should have cut a little bit lighter. So I mean engraved a little bit lighter, but overall it still came out pretty good. And you could also tell how small the hole is right here that I made. So these are basically my Christmas ornaments. And by the way, I made all this stuff using Grok Imagine. So if you guys haven't used Grok Imagine, it does a really good job of creating images. So I made a Happy Halloween sign right here. I made a pumpkin Halloween and I traced this with the tool as well and it came out really clean in the back as well. I also made this reindeer and you could tell it does a really really clean job. Look at the antlers on the reindeer. Super super clean, very detailed and very clean cut in the back as well. So very very impressed with this. And then we have Bruce Lee which came out really good. It did I, I basically, I was burning it and I feel like the only thing with the Bruce Lee is it kind of went so hot over here that the wood itself started to warp a little bit. So then for Spider-Man, I calmed down a little bit with the settings. Basically, I made it go a little bit faster with a little bit slower, uh, with a little less power. And it didn't warp, which is great, but it didn't come out as clean. So if you look at it from this angle, it looks pretty good. But when you look at it straight on, it doesn't look as good as the Bruce Lee. The Bruce Lee looks a little more defined. So I basically have to find the setting in between both of these to get it just right. So I have to play with it some more. But again, very clean cut overall. So very impressed with this thing. Very, very impressed. So I basically got some Spider-Man files and I think I'm going to go with this one. And it was a close tie between that one and this one. They both look really good. Most of these look good, but there's some mistakes with some of them. But I like this picture, so we're just going to do this picture. So I'm going to open up Falcon Design Space. And when you first open this up, it gives you a whole bunch of options of different things that you can actually do. So let's say, I mean, you have a lot of categories. Let's say you like this. You can actually click on this and download the FDS file and then load that up and actually uh, burn this basically. But I'm going to go to Canvas and then I'm going to drag and drop Spider-Man. And I have a few options. So basically this, this is probably a little too big, but I'm going to make this smaller. All right. So right off the bat, if you click on camera and you take a photo. So below the top cover, there's a camera and this is what you use when you click photo to actually take pictures of what you're going to laser engrave on. It'll show you the background and then you can zoom out by holding control. And what I could do, this helps me kind of focus it. It's not going to be a perfect like one to one, but it should be close enough. So I'm going to center that. I'm going to click frame and I'm going to make sure that the laser is within the frame. Okay, it is. So this actually came out great. Now, 
I could print this and call it a day. And by the way, these are the options. So this is a basswood board at three millimeters. And I've already adjusted the height to this and basically put this underneath and loosen these screws and then adjusted the laser until it's touching this and then tighten these and then move this out of the way. So this guy is actually ready for this. It's already at the right height. But if I was doing other things, I could basically pick a lot of these other options, bamboo, I could do acrylic, I could do metal, leather if I wanted to. So lots of options here, but I'm going to just click cancel because it's already on password board. And then it kind of suggests these options. So it's like, oh, you speed 3000 and power 40. So speed is how fast the laser is moving, power is how much power is uh, going. So if you're cutting something, it's gonna be more power at a slower speed versus if you're engraving, it's gonna be a faster speed with a lower power. But after playing with this thing, I think 3500 is better and then we drop the power down to 35. I think that makes a better image. The other one I feel like is just a little too powerful. And then here's the kicker. Now I could leave this alone, but I don't wanna do that. I actually wanna cut out the edges and the way to do that is if I go to shapes, I can select rectangle and then I can make a rectangle at kind of basically at the edge. I can even zoom in and stuff if I wanted to. And then basically make the rectangle. And okay, that was a bad idea. But it's okay because I could adjust it. Okay. So I can adjust it. When you do go from the sides, it's just like diagonal, but if you want to move it up and down, just select it from the side you want. So I can line this up. That's probably the best thing to do to line it up. And I'm just holding control. And then if you hold spacebar, you can move the image to the right or left, or you could base, if I hold the spacebar, I can move the image basically. So I'm gonna zoom out, zoom in over here, and then select this and basically put it right at the top. Okay, now I don't wanna have sharp edges, so I'm gonna make the sh edges a little rounded. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to five. And then if I zoom in, you can actually see that the edges are rounded. Now this thing is going to late line engraving and I don't want that, I want it to go to line cutting. So I'm actually going to select this I'm gonna click on the black because the black's right here. So I'm gonna click on existing. And I'm gonna click on this and it takes a second to basically load. But once I select this, I need to do line cutting by the way. And where's, where's my guy? There it is. Okay, so it kind of went behind and what I want to do is I want to go here, select this, and then click delete because I don't want that. And then line cutting, I want that. And then if I do preview, preview will actually show me what it's going to do before it does it. Okay, it's going to take two hours and 38 minutes, basically three hours to burn this which is a very long time. And that's kind of what you get when you get the 10 watt. The 10 watts can do things, it's just, it does it slower because it has less power. Select this, this is cut. And the other one is engrave. So I'm gonna put it back to where it was and then we should be good to go. I'm gonna increase that to 500. Because 350, I feel like it doesn't need to go that slow. It could still cut even at 500 with 100% power. So this one is going to move, the engraving is going to move quickly with less power, where the cutting is going to move slower with full power, basically. We'll do 30. And then we'll do frame one more time, which is going to go back to home. And then... Go ahead and basically do it.
And all I need to do is basically click start and just let it do this thing. So I used Grok Imagine to generate a whole bunch of images and basically I got this pumpkin. So I'm going to drag and drop and I'm going to show you guys how to not only laser engrave this pumpkin but to make a cut out of it. So we're going to start off by dragging and dropping it here and then we're going to click on image cropping. So I left a little bit of a line right here so I'm just going to crop that out. This just makes it super easy to do. And this will make a copy of it. So I'm going to click confirm. That's going to create a copy. So I'm going to erase the original, bring the copy over here. And basically, I'll just resize that real quick. And then, I, even though I didn't really need to do that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do smart cutout. And what I want to do is I want to erase this white background and make it transparent. And the way to do that is it's on magic wand, remove. I'm literally going to click on this, and you're going to see this thing disappear. I'm going to click confirm. That's going to make another copy. I'm going to delete this one. So now I have the image that I want. Obviously, I could rotate it as well, but now that I have the image that I want, now I need to do an image trace so I can actually do a cutout. Now I, now I did that with the reindeer, as you guys see on this image. And reindeer was a lot easier because when I did an image trace, it actually just took the outsides. This one, there's a lot of lines, so it gets a little more confused. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to do trace image, and then I'm just gonna put the threshold here. I'm gonna press, I'm gonna ignore some noise, maybe more noise. I'm gonna increase the smoothness a bit, and then, so I'm gonna click confirm, and you could see that it basically created, you could see it here that it, pretty much created this. The problem is if I do if I do line engraving, that's one thing, but if I do cutting, which is what I want, it's not gonna be great. So this is a little tedious, but basically what you can do is you can start erasing by actually selecting, and then because it has this selected, I, I just keep hitting backspace, and it's just deleting it. You can also just double click some of the stuff and it will delete that as well. Few moments later. Okay, so now that we just have the outside shape, that's the one that I want to engrave. So I have it set to engrave, not engrave, sorry, cut. I need to change it to cut. I'll change this to 550 because 550 is strong enough to cut through this. And then I'm basically going to just match it up with this. And I'll align it with this. I'm gonna do top okay I think that's right okay so now we could see that this thing is basically outlined you see this little it's hard to see but it's like this little blue line basically right here and so now I'm gonna move it together and then I'm going to press frame to see, oh, I got to take a new picture because I actually moved the birch wood to the left. So I'm gonna click on photo and then I'm gonna move this to the left. And then I'm gonna do layers, I'm gonna do frame. I just wanna see where it's starting. Now I gotta move it a little. I mean, it's okay because I'm not gonna touch that part. But just in case, I'll just move it a little bit. Okay. Need line engraving, so I'm going to delete that. 
I could have also just clicked this to not output it basically, but that's okay. And then I'm going to speed this up a bit because I don't need it to be super strong. So let's, let's change it to 4,000. All right, then we're going to click start. So when I make my laser cuts, the reason why the back comes out clean is the honeycomb really, really helps with that. And if I show you guys underneath the honeycomb, it does go through it. And I try to adjust the settings where it could barely make the cut on the birch wood because I don't want it to go so slowly that it actually starts leaving these, you know, more marks than normal. Some of this other stuff are left much lighter marks, as you could see, compared to the stronger lines here. I mean, I will wipe that away, which it does say, warning, please clean the tray properly and do not accumulate debris. So you are supposed to remove the honeycomb and clean this up, and I just made some uh, cuts, so I am gonna clean this. And as far as the laser right here, the A1, this is a 10 watt laser, so it's not super powerful, but it can still make a lot of the cuts as I showed you guys. The only thing is it has to go slower just because it's less power. So some of the other ones have more power, like there's a 20 watt version, there's stronger versions than that basically that can go faster while keeping that just because they have more power. So this one can still pretty much do those cuts. It just needs to go slower or it might need to make multiple passes as well. In summary, the Falcon A1 does super clean cuts, especially with the help of the optional honeycomb accessory. It makes a big difference in terms of having a cleaner cut, especially from the back. Engravings come out nice. I do need to play with it more and more just to get it just right, but first few passes were already coming out pretty well, and I was trying a few different settings as well. Now, it does work on other materials, as I showed you guys in Falcon Design Space, which is the software tool that I use to engrave this thing. And by the way, that tool is free. Uh, it's included in the price, so basically, you don't need to get a separate software. And yes, it is compatible with Lightburn, and I do actually have Lightburn, but I didn't try it with this because Falcon Design Space was doing... It pretty much had most of the features that I wanted, and it was... I mean, I used that and it was fine. And again, included in the price, which is another bonus for getting this thing. Now, as far as the smell, because that's something that I was interested in because this is an enclosed, because I have another laser engraver that's not enclosed and that one works well. However, when I use that thing, it pretty much the entire room smells because it's not enclosed where this one is enclosed. Now, this one still smells. It's, it's when I'm doing it on birch wood, it kind of it has that kind of that burned wood smell a little bit, but it's substantially less than the non-enclosed laser engravers. It's substantially less, and the vent and that and the fan and everything does help um, essentially mitigate that. So it, it's very good from that aspect. Now, one thing that it doesn't have is there is no auto adjustment for the laser, so you do need to manually adjust it based on the material. Now, if you're constantly using the same material, then it's fantastic because it's already adjusted to the right height. But if you're constantly changing materials that you're engraving or cutting with, then I could see how this could be not as fun if you have to constantly adjust it. And at that point, it might be worth looking at the higher end model that does do auto adjustments. It's really a premium laser engraver because it feels nice. I also really like the fact that it pretty much came built. There was not really much I needed to do to set it up other than, you know, connect a few cables and, you know, remove the foam and everything. And it was pretty much good to go. So overall, very well built. And the fact that, again, it comes with the software, Falcon Design Space included in the price is an added bonus. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash the subscribe button. If you guys have questions or comments, let me know in the comment sections below. And as always, Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.